Hey guys, it's Tom. Uh, thanks for coming by my channel where we mostly do audio post-production tutorials. There's been a couple of music and OBS tutorials too, but most people are here for audio post-production. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how you mix dialogue and also vocals. You could do this for a hip hop or rock or any kind of vocal recording, any kind of human voice with a fader. Now, you don't have to have a control surface for this. You can easily do this with the mouse. You can do this in any DAW that supports automation. I use Pro Tools, so we're going to be looking at that, but Logic, GarageBand, anything that supports recording automation, in other words, recording changes on a track, uh, we're going to be going through how to do that with dialogue or vocals, any kind of spoken word. Um, but if, you're, if you want to know what I've been up to for the past month or so, I did make a second YouTube channel, so if you want to see what I've been up to, I'll post a link to that. Uh, totally unrelated to audio post-production. So for the other 99.9% .9 of you, we'll just jump right in. Now this idea actually comes from a uh, follower, whatever you want to call it, viewer. Starker Melopela says, Hi Thomas, could you make a video about dialogue leveling with a fader? So shout out to him for... Um, you know, the idea, I love getting ideas. If you have an idea for a video, just post it in a comment. I try to read all the comments, even if I, I can't respond to all them. So keep them coming. But for now, let's just jump right in. We're in Pro Tools. And let's say, just to start off with, you don't have any uh, dialogue or voiceover to practice with. If you have Soundly, you just click on Voices and you can generate some speech to practice this on if you have a project you're working on that's going to be the best thing to start with because it's going to give you real world experience the the whole concept behind doing a fader move uh, whether you use a control surface which i've got my trusty and very affordable fader port 16 it's got a little dust on it but i wanted 16 faders thousand bucks easy sell for me um the, the, the whole concept of writing a fader is you can see the human voice naturally will start out at the beginning of a sentence louder and the pitch will actually be higher too. And then as the person speaks, the pitch and volume will go down. And there's other things like performance wise, an actor may choose to whisper or vocalist might not be as loud on a certain word. So this, the, the overall idea of how to write a fader is totally universal whether it's pop music or mixing dialogue for a film or voiceover but it's based on manual compression and what we're going to do to manually compress this is you can see there's a peak here there's a peak here and then some of this stuff in between is very i don't want to say it's too quiet but the dynamics we want to contain them with a fader without even using a plugin. You see, there's no inserts here. So the first step before you slap on any kind of compression should always be, you know, after your EQ, you want to start writing the volume on it. You want to do a manual compression ride with a fader. So those are going to be quick moves. So what you need to do is, is set your track automation mode. You see it's on read. Change this over to touch or latch. Touch mode is going to mean when you touch it, the fader is going to write automation. As soon as you let go, the fader is going to return to zero or wherever it's set to. You know, if you've brought, for example, the volume down here and you ride the fader, the fader is going to go back to zero after you're done. I'll show you. Pro Tools is and always will be the best DAW in the Snap. world. Snap. Snaps back down. Okay. So I'm going to undo that. Touch mode is great if you already have kind of like you know clip gain and everything set right it's great for that latch mode can be great for if you want to touch the fader and then have it continue on pro tools is and always will be the best dog so you let go and it's still like it. at minus 10.3 so this is good for music rides because you can start the music cue out hot and bring it down and have it be at the level you set it at until you touch it again but you see when you let go you get a pop right here so you have to go back and edit that or glide the fader back up but for our first pass on this we're going to keep to touch mode you can do this with a mouse the easiest way to do that with a mouse you can grab this 
and kind of ride it, but it's way easier to bring up the fader. So if you do not have a control surface, go ahead and click the little fader. Pro Tools is and always will be the best DAW in the world. You and you can write like automation with this. So this is called mouse mixing. I think it's way better to have a control surface just because it's it's more efficient, feels better. Um, so even if it's just one fader, it's something. It gives you something to work with. We're going to do a quick fader ride on this. And what I'm going to be doing is just bringing up the parts that are lower to manually compress it. And forgive me, I, I messed up these two fingers. This one was totally dislocated and this one was hyperextended. So they're pretty swollen. I got to use one finger um, for this, this fader ride. Pro Tools is let, me st let me get a little more pre-roll. Pro Tools is and always will be the best DAW in the world. You may not like it, but that is the truth. So you can see, uh, and it's smooth the automation after the pass. All I'm doing is bringing up the parts that are low. And you could do this for anything vocal. You could do this for non-vocal stuff, a guitar solo or uh, a trumpet or a synthesizer line. This is the type of manual, let's say art, this human art that you can add to any kind of production, film or music or even podcast that like, a robot cannot do this because it's based on feel and it's not just making a decision based on the level. It's actually making a decision based on how it sounds. So this this automation here I might want to bring down, but let's listen back to it and see. Pro Tools is and always will be the best DAW in the world. You may not like it, but that is the truth. That yeah, sounds fine. Maybe bring it down a little bit. So you can see like I'm pushing it up 4 dB here. I could probably go higher here. Now, a kind of pro tip, if if it's too fast for you to do this, which it's going to be when you're first starting out, let me undo this. You can um, get super surgical in Pro Tools by hitting Shift Play and doing a half speed playback while still writing automation. So Shift Play. Pro Tools is and always will be the best job in the world. You may not like it, but that is the truth. So you can see I was able to get way more surgical with the volume automation and actually bring up like not just the ends, you know, the last couple words, but in between the words I was able to get. This is also great for sibilance. If somebody's very sibilant, you can manually ride the S's down. It's going to sound more transparent than a de -esser or any other kind of plugin you can throw on it. So a great way to summarize a volume ride, a fader ride on uh, any kind of vocal recording is it's mixing without plugins. There's no plugins on this, no EQ, no compression. Now, if you wanted to, after this, add compression, you could totally do that. Uh, but let's talk about automation modes real quick, just because I showed you this in touch mode. What I like to do after I'm happy, let's listen back to this. Pro Tools is and always will be the best DAW in the world. You may not like it, but that is the truth. So it, it's way more even. This I probably brought up a little too much. Um, but after I'm happy with this, and I don't want to hear this fader flipping around, or if I want to do a global thing, like bring up the whole thing, flip the automation mode to trim. The fader is now going to just sit parked at zero. Pro Tools is and always will be the best DAW in the world. You may not like it, but that is the truth. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this up. It's a little bit low for me, but I'm going to keep all this automation. Right now in trim mode, I'm going to bring this whole chunk of dialogue up a tiny bit. Pro Tools is and always will be the best DAW in the world. You may not like it, but that is the truth. See, it just bumped everything up. So it's great to start in just touch or latch. And then after you're happy with a pre-dub uh, of dialogue or any you know vocals, whatever you're whatever you're writing with the fader, just flip it over to trim mode. It's going to park your fader. It's also going to make it easier to do uh, any kind of like global adjustment to bring stuff up or down. So I hope this tutorial has helped you guys. You can do this same exact thing with an EQ or compressor or a de-esser by automating the 
parameters by doing like a flip on the plugin automation, but always start with volume. And again, this is before compressor, before any kind of dynamic processor, before you, you probably want to do it after noise reduction, just because if this had a bunch of ambient noise in it, you're not going to be able to ride stuff up and down without hearing the background noise change. So that is kind of the limiting factor with a production recording is how noisy is it? The more noisy the recording, the less of this you're going to be able to do without people hearing the background noise pump up and down. Um, so do it after noise reduction, but you know, do it before you add a compressor or before you turn your compressor on. Get that manual compression going. Get the art into your mix, and it's going to sound better than if you just slapped a bunch of compressors on it and had everything flat. So that's that. I hope this helps you guys out. Um, it's a great way to add a level of artistry to a mix. Anytime you can get your hands on something and really put your own stamp on a project, people appreciate that. So don't get caught up in like the latest plugins that are coming out or, uh, you know, adding like complex signal chains. Oh, somebody's calling me. Who could this be? Mm, that looks like a spam, but I'll take it. This is Tom. <laughs> How many spam calls do you guys get in a day? Because I, it seems like two or three is kind of the norm for me. It's yeah. Anyways, sorry about that. Uh, what was I talking about? Artistry in your mix. Okay, right. So anytime you can put hands on your project whether that's with a control surface, if you have to use a mouse or trackball to mix, totally fine. It's really just about keeping the art. Like it's it's a combination of of technical skills and art. Any kind of audio production is even even composing really because there's so much technology that you just have to know nowadays. So try to keep the human touch because a big sticking point or conversation point is automation and artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence is never going to be able to do what our creative brains can do uh, so don't be afraid to take risks and get your hands on your project go record your own sound effects like think outside the box and think of how you can really craft something versus just being a fader monkey or a button pusher like you don't want to you don't want to be that person because you're the one who's going to be replaced. If you're just a technical, like, oh, I know how to work these plugins and I know how to, you know, check the boxes on the spec sheet. That's great. But you're in five, 10 years, you might not have any work left. Whereas a true artist is going to be in demand because they bring something to the project that cannot be automated. It cannot be replicated by a machine. So get out there, uh, get those projects going, get your hands on them do real mixing not just ma not just plug-in mixing uh and really add your own touch to your project so i hope this video has been helpful like i said i love comments i love uh, video suggestions there's been some great ones uh from viewers so definitely keep them coming guys and i'll catch you next time